This is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy representing the Solid Foundation International Ministries. And on today's topic, this will be concerning the rape issue, dealing with rape in the Bible. Now, you may hear a lot of camps disputing this, the, this issue. You may hear a lot of camps debating on this issue, just dealing with rape. And, and, and we're going to explain the rape doctrine so that you may see clearly um, that the Bible, however, it does speak concerning the rape doctrine for you camps that uh, that may not have any any edification concerning the rape doctrine. Now it's time to get into it. Let's get it. Okay, this is First Corinthians seven and thirty six. It says, "But if any man think that he behave himself uncommonly." towards his version if she passes this is the main thing if she passes past the fl flower of her age if she passed the flower of her age and need so require let him do what he will he sent it not let them marry so marry marriage in the bible is uh basically sexual intercourse when, when a man puts his rod into a woman, um, that's marriage, man. When he breaks her virginity, when he basically, because it speaks on the woman, if she passed the flower of her age, basically meaning that uh, whatever whatever age that she comes on her flower, you know, most, most young women pass their flowers around the age of maybe 12. You know, some some women young younger than that pass their flower. Um, it's been known that a nine year old girl, you know, she got her flowers at the age of nine. Some girls get their flowers at the age of ten or whatever. But according to your age, when you when you pass your flower or whatever particular age, then a woman is basically uh, capable of marriage. Okay. She's capable of having sexual intercourse, all right. And this is what people don't understand because if your daughter passes her flower at the age of twelve, then she's capable of having sexual intercourse. And um, if she's not capable of having sexual intercourse, then tell me why should she pass the flower at that particular age? Because when you pass your flowers at a particular age, that means that you are capable of being impregnated. All right, so. Basically concerning First Corinthians 7 and 36, it says if she passed the flower of her age, whatever age she gets her period, whether it's 10, whether it's 11, 12, or whatever, it says in need so required, let him do what he will. Let who do what he will? The man. He sent it not. Let them marry. Okay, what is marriage? Sexual intercourse. So now we're going into the interlinear and uh, we're going to show you basically... Um, what marriage is so this is what marriage marriage uh, this is what it says in the Greek Strong's G 1060 Gameo 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 which is G 1060 and the strong concordance the Greek Strong's concordance so uh it says to lead into marriage, to take to wife, to get married to, to give oneself in marriage. All right. To give a daughter in marriage. All right. And uh, let's go back up. And uh, basically, let's look at G1062. 1062 dealing with the Greek dictionary. Okay, it says Gamos, and uh, that's the etymology a wedding or marriage festival, a wedding banquet, a marriage feast, marriage, matrimony. And what is marriage, man? Okay, marriage concerning the Bible is sexual intercourse. That's what marriage is concerning the Bible, sexual intercourse. And um, 
Many people find that hard to believe, but marriage simply, according to the Bible, is not going before the priests and uh, the rings. You're dealing with basically uh, because the so-called white man today, he tells you that marriage is is uh basically going before the priest saying your vows you know getting your wedding your wedding bands and arranging your marriage um the armor bear the flower girls all these things that are carried out in these pagan temples man according to the so-called white man that's marriage according to the so-called white man you have to go get your marriage license and and basically to certify that you are married but according to the bible Marriage is basically sexual intercourse. All right, that's what that is. And uh, we're going to get into some more verses to show you that uh, there's nothing wrong to have sex with a, a 9 year old, 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old girl. There's nothing wrong to have sexual intercourse, that, so to speak, marry. There's nothing wrong to marry a girl around 11, 12, 13. Whatever age that she is capable of passing her flowers, that's the age, that's the particular age that she's capable of having sexual intercourse. Because she's eligible for sexual intercourse. Why? Because she is at the particular age to be impregnated, okay? And there is no, there is not nothing wrong with that. According to the Most High. And this is going to be in the kingdom man. Many people find that hard to believe. But this is exactly what's going to be in the kingdom. Because we're going to get them. We're we going to get the woman. Um, at a young age man. W whenever she's capable of passing her flower. And it says. And need so require. Let him do what he will. He sent it not. See so the scripture says that. He sent it not. Let them marry. That's not sin. To have sexual intercourse with. A woman, whatever her particular age is, when she passes a flower, man, whether she is 9, 10, 11, 12. Because according to Esau, today that's statutory rape. Okay, if you 21, uh, you know, 18 years or older, and then uh, if you have a sexual intercourse with a girl around the age of, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, that is consider that's considered statutory rape. Why? Because uh, in Esau's kingdom, that's that's according to his statutes, and that's why they call it statutory rape. Because that's according to the so-called white man statutes. All right, that's not according according to uh, the common law. All right, so statutory laws are not according to the common law. All right, the common law in the Bible, nothing is wrong with this. The common law, uh. The common law supports this. But according to each Esau, the so-called white man, according to his statutes, this is statutory rape. And um, that's a charge, man, for um, you to be having sex with a 10-year-old or 11-year-old, 12-year-old girl. That's statutory rape in Esau's eyes. But it's nothing wrong as long as this girl is capable of passing the flower of her age okay but don't go off and try this today because you brothers will be jailed for doing this because this is considered a statutory rape and, and you must understand that we are living in Esau's kingdom and this is his kingdom and this is his statutes okay so if you go off and do this this will be considered statutory rape and today's time and you will be jailed for doing this okay so don't do this all right and uh because we're gonna go to ecclesiastes 7 and 16 ecclesiastes 7 and 16 it says uh be not righteous over much neither make thyself over wise why should thou destroy thyself so it say be not righteous over much be not righteous over much because this is not basically uh acceptable in esau's kingdom so taking a girl at the uh age of her flower is not acceptable in esau's kingdom is considered statutory rape so don't be be not over righteous be not righteous over much 
Okay, so we can't keep the coming law and eat in Esau's kingdom. So don't be over righteous. Don't think that you can go out and according to the Bible, just because it says that you can you can basically perform this on a particular young girl because you would be jailed. But I'm just bringing out uh, some issues concerning the rape adoption. Explain, and uh, uh, I'm gonna show you something else. Uh, let's look at uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 25 Let's do Deuteronomy 22 25 This is concerning the rape doctrine Alright So It says Uh Deuteronomy 22, 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lie with her shall die. So if a particular man find a find a betrothed damsel, now betrothed basically right here means a young woman that is engaged and to another man so if a man find a betrothed damsel and basically damsel right here simply means a young woman or another word for damsel is virgin all right so if a man find a betrothed damsel and so to speak if a man finds um an engaged woman if a man finds a, a young engaged woman in the field a woman that's engaged and the man force her and lie with her then the man only that lie with her, her shall die why simply because verse 22 and 26 is going to explain how to do the remedy but unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing why there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death for as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth them, even so is this matter. Why? It says, but unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. Why? Because if a man finds a betrothed damsel, basically in the field, a betrothed damsel is a young woman that's an engaged, engaged to another man, a virgin that's engaged to another man. If he finds a virgin that's engaged to another man in the field and then he force her and lower her then only only that lower her shall die why because this man shall be put to death because this damsel which was a young woman which was a virgin she was betrothed meaning that she was engaged to a particular man okay and anytime a woman basically is betrothed to a particular man or engaged to a particular man you are not to take that woman, okay? You are not to force her, okay? If she's engaged, you're not to force her and lie with her, okay? Because she's engaged into another man. She 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 has a relationship. Let's look. Let's look down at verse uh, Deuteronomy twenty two twenty seven. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried. See, the woman that was engaged cried and there was none to save her so while this man was raping her basically she was crying for help and there was no one to save her so if this particular man you know carried this out on a patrol damsel a young woman that's engaged to another man if he rapes a young woman that is engaged to another man then only that man shall die because he he failed to pay respect to a betrothed woman that was engaged to another man, and he shall die because it's basically considered considered uh, adultery. Deuteronomy twenty two and twenty eight. If a man finds a damsel that is a virgin, okay. So if a man finds a young woman that is a virgin, a young woman which is a damsel that's never had sexual intercourse. And uh, she's a virgin. If that man finds that woman that is a virgin that never had sexual intercourse, which is not betrothed, what that means when it says, which is not betrothed. 
that means a woman that is not engaged to another man. So if a man finds a damsel that is not engaged to another man that never had sexual intercourse, she's a virgin, okay, and she's not betrothed, which she's not engaged to another man. If a man finds a virgin that is not betrothed, that is not engaged to another man, and if he lay hold on her, I'm going to show you, if he lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found, let's see what's going to happen concerning Deuteronomy 22 and 29. If he lay hold on a, basically on a virgin that's never been betrothed, basically never been engaged to another man, and that and that has never had sexual intercourse. If he lay hold on her, lie with her, have sex with her, do the remedy 22 and 29. Then the man that lie with her shall give unto the damsel's father, basically shall give unto the young woman's father, the virgin father, that he took a virginity, the same woman. If he will lie with her, he shall give her father 50 shackles of silver. And she shall what? She shall be his wife, man. All right. And 50 and 50 shackles of silver is basically I want to say $1400 in today's time. And she shall be his wife. Why? Because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. So you can see right there that's rape, man. That's rape. If a man find a dancer that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, because if I go out and say, for instance, if I went out and I saw a young woman that never had sexual intercourse, that she was not engaged to another man, and I decided that I wanted that woman, so I snatched that woman up, man, and I laid hands on her, snatched her up, forced her, throw her down, and I popped her, man. There's no, there's no fault in that, man. All right, because it says then the man that lie with her, the man that forced her down, popped her, the man that lie with her shall give unto the damsels, shall give unto that same woman father 50 shackles of silver, man, which is $1,400 a day. And she shall what? She shall be his wife because he hath humbled her. How did he humble her? By putting his rod to her. He may not put her away all the days of his life. Now, let me go into tools, and I'm going to go into interlinear. Then the man, basically, that lie with her, shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shackles of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he what? He have humbled her. Now, what does that mean in the Hebrew? Let's see. Strong's age, 6031. Anah. 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 That's what it means. Hebrew 6031 or 6031 in the Hebrew dictionary, which means anah. That, that means humble in the Hebrew anah. And let's see what it says. It says to be occupied, to be abused with. Okay. To afflict, oppress, to humble, to be afflicted, to be bowed down, to be put down, to become low, to be depressed, be cast down, to be downcast, to be afflicted, to stoop. Just bringing out some terms concerning Anna, which is humble. To humble oneself, to bow down, to be afflicted, to be humble. To humble, to mishandle, to afflict, to humble, to be humiliated, to afflict, to be to humble. Weaken oneself. Alright, to be afflicted, to be humble. To humble oneself, to be afflicted. Basically, now we're going to show you in the... Uh, like I said, we don't read the New International Version, but I want to show you this in the New International Version, just to let you brothers see that rape is however recorded in the Bible, but it's not the same terminology that we use today because the so-called white man, let me tell you something, man, you know, uh, the so-called white man, what he has done is, uh, he, uh, the so-called white man has abused the word rape. Now, when you think of rape, you think of you think of a guy that's putting his hands over a woman's mouth and taking her, popping her, you know, putting a, putting his hand over her mouth and taking her, you know, um, beating her 
and uh, just just abusing her body. You know, that's what we consider rape to be today. But rape simply means in the Bible, Ana, and what Ana simply means is to 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 humble her, to humble. Now we're gonna show you this one to humble her. Now we're gonna show you this. Deuteronomy 22, 28 concerning the rape doctrine. And then we're going to the New International Version to show you that what it's talking about. So this is uh, Deuteronomy and uh, 22, 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, mean not engaged, and he lie hold on her with her and they be found. So what lay hold means? We going to show you in H8610 to lay hold upon someone. To catch, to handle, to lay hold, to take, to seize, to will. To lay hold of, to seize, to attest, to catch, to grasp, in order to wield, will, use skillfully. Uh, to be sized, to be arrested, be caught, to be taken, captured, to cap, to grasp. So now, if you uh, go into the, I'm going to show you the NIV. We're going to go into the NIV. All right. And I'm going to show you this, what it says in the NIV. And um, I'm going to the same thing. Deuteronomy 22 and 28. Okay. In the NIV. And watch what it says. Deuteronomy 22 and 28. Look what it says in Deuteronomy 22 and 28. If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married, okay, and rapes her, they are discovered. So if a man meets a damsel, which is a young woman or a virgin, who is not pledged, basically not betrothed like we saw in the beginning. She is not engaged to be uh, with another man. She's not pledged to be married. And he rapes her. You see that? He rapes her. And they... Are discovered Deuteronomy 22 29. He shall pay her father 50 shackles of silver, which is $1,400 a day. He must marry the young woman. See that young woman that he raped right here. He must marry the young woman. Okay, for he was vowed, for he has violated her. Now, like I said, King James said humble. So he violated her. How did he violate her? He violated her by raping her. By raping her. Okay. So that's how he violated her. Okay. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. So you can see that the Bible supports the rape doctrine man. That's all it simply means. Okay. And um, if we go further up. And. Uh, you can look at Deuteronomy 22 and 25. It say, but if but if out in the country a man happens to meet a young woman pledged to be married, if if a man meet a young woman basically that is engaged when it says pledged to be married, if a man meets a young woman, this is the New International Version. Let's not forget, I'm just showing you in the New International Version, it has rape. We don't read the New International Version because we know it has been basically diluted and watered down. But I'm just showing you this that it says rape. Okay, it says, but if, but if out in the country a man happens to meet a young woman that plays to be married, if he meet a young woman that is engaged, and he rapes her, you see that, and he rapes her, rape. If a basically a man rapes an engaged woman, only that man who has done this shall die. Why? Because it says Deuteronomy twenty two twenty six. This is the same thing we went over. This just the NIV. It says, do nothing to the woman. She has committed no sin, deserving death. This case is like that of someone who attacks and murders a neighbor. Deuteronomy 22, 27. This is the NIV. For the man found the young woman out in the country and through the betrothed woman screamed 
and there was none to rescue her. Okay, so you can see that, man. This is on two accounts. First of all, if a man rapes an engaged woman that is engaged to a particular guy, if he rapes her, then only that man shall die. And then on the other hand, if a man find a young woman in the country that is not betrothed, if a man find a young woman in the country that is not engaged, okay, if he find a young woman in the country that is not engaged to an, uh, another man and she's just single, and if he rapes her, okay, if he rapes her, as right here, if a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged, who is not engaged, who is not in any relationship and, and to be married, and he rapes her, and they are discovered, discover, no justice is, justice is carried out because there's nothing wrong. This is the common law. He shall pay her father 50 shackles of silver, man. And he must marry the woman. He, and, and for he has violated her, he can never divorce her. So it's nothing wrong with the rape issue, man. It's nothing wrong with that. All right. So I just wanted to clear up that to show you, man. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. And um, before we close out, I want to show you basically Mark 5 and 41. It's the St. Mark 5 and 41. Okay, so that was in the NIV. We're going back into the original King James. So this is St. Mark 5 and 41. This is talking about Yahawashai. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumai. Which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Now, damsel, let's not forget, is your young woman, a young virgin. Okay, that's what that means. A young woman of marriageable age or a virgin. That's what damsel means. And Yahweh shall say unto this young woman of marriageable age or this virgin, I say unto thee, arise. Mark 5 and 42. And straightway the damsel arose. The damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age, she was of the age of twelve years. So this damsel that Yahweh shall heal, this young woman, the marriageable age of this virgin, was at the age of twelve years old, and they was astonished with great astonishment when he healed her. So you can see, man. A damsel is a young marriageable, uh, a young woman of marriageable age, whether married or not, or a young woman that is a virgin. Okay. So you can see right there, man. Usually, when a woman gets her flowers, it's around the age of twelve years old. I just want to bring that out, and there's nothing wrong as long as she passed the age of a flower, she can marry. Okay. And. Uh, I want to go over, I want to actually go over, uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians. Ten and twenty-three. Okay. Let's look at first Corinthians ten and twenty-three. It says, All things all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify, edify not. Because all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Like I, I was telling you, man, because this is the coming law that the Bible speaks of. But we can't go by the coming law in the so-called white man's kingdom. We can't take a young girl of marriageable age, whatever age she passes her flower, we can't have sexual intercourse with these particular women, man, because that would be statutory rape concerning the so-called white man. All right. So all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient because we don't live under the common law. We live under the so-called white man statutes. And that's why he called this statutory rape. If you were to take a young woman of a marriageable age, if you take a young woman that has passed the flowers, even though she's capable of having sex at that particular age, if if you take upon that woman, then that's considered statutory rape, man. All right. So just wanted you to see that. 
concerning um the rape doctrine, man. So hope you guys were edified and uh to next time, shalom.